On Monday, our Washington correspondent Dan Cohen joined us and shared his confrontation with former president of Colombia, Ivan Duque. Things got a little heated. Here's a recap. Señor Presidente, sí. un honor. ¿Cómo te va? Muy bien. ¿Cómo te ha ido? Uh, muy bien, gracias, gracias. It's, it's a, if I speak English, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's an honor to meet you. The honor is mine. How are you doing? I'm man? doing well. I'm doing well. Can I? T can we take a selfie? Sure, man. Okay. One, two. Oh, it's, can we say Nye Nye Hernandez? No, El no, Nye no, 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 Hernandez. Well, then shortly thereafter, Colombia's media and political establishment rushed to defend Duque. It was really interesting to see the, the love and outpouring to support Duque. Uh, Dan Cohen joins us to guide us now through why the media and the political establishment in Colombia came to defend this individual. Let us know, Dan, what's going on here. Yeah, Clayton, the entire media establishment were they were tripping over each other in this mad rush to show their solidarity with Ivan F you respect me, Duque, and published a series of hit pieces on me. But key thing before we start, none of them could disprove a single accusation I made against Duque because they are all 100% certifiably true. And I'm going to show you how all of these outlets like Ivan Duque are tied to paramilitary death squads and drug trafficking. So we're going to begin with Revista, Revista Semana. Uh, this magazine ran three hit pieces, including one called The Secret History of Dan Cohen, which consisted of a few of my tweets that are publicly visible, so not exactly a secret. They also ran a TikTok-style social media influencer video called The Cohen Deception. It said that I'm not a journalist and that I'm a fanatic of uh, Nicolas Maduro, the president of Venezuela, and, and Vladimir Putin of Russia. But of course, they never address the substance of what I said. Here's what we have to understand about, La Sem about Semana Revista. Semana's director is named Vicky Davila. She's sort of like the Barbara Walters of Colombia, except she married into one of the biggest drug cartels in the country called the Henico clan. And the Henico clan controls the Caribbean coast uh, and specific, specifically the, the, the Cesar department, which is extremely important for drug trafficking into uh, the Caribbean, to the United States, and to Europe. So here is Vicky Davila's tweet calling me a madman, an extremist, and a cowardly attacker. Now, in May, a figure named Salvador Mancuso, who was the head of the single worst paramilitary death squad in Colombia's history, called the Auto Defensas Unidas, commonly known as the AUC. This guy's a, 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 a mass murderer. He testified in court that the Henico clan, to which Dick, Vicky Davila is married into, paid his paramilitary to kill. Now, I, I want people to understand that these weren't just assassinations of individuals. We're talking about the extermination of entire villages in which death squads would torture and murder all of the residents and then dress some of them in guerrilla fighter uniforms and place weapons on them in order to justify the killings, which the media would then play along with. So Vicky Davila worked at that time for an outlet called RCN, which played along with uh, this, this scandal um, called False Positives uh, in, in, in a huge way. So RCN now reports that I insulted and attacked Ivan Duque but again, like, like Semana, couldn't challenge or disprove the substance of what I said. Here is the director of RCN, Jose Manuel Acevedo, saying, abuse can never replace arguments. What happened to former President Duque today cannot be celebrated. It's very low. Okay, so RCN is owned by a family called Ardila Lule. The Ardila Lule family owns not only RCN, but many massive businesses including the largest beverage company in Colombia called Postobon. Salvatore Mancuso, the, the, uh, the death squad leader, he, who is now in prison in the United States, he was extradited. He was basically sold out by, uh, by his former friends. He testified in May that uh, Postobon funded, uh, Postobon being the beverage company that is owned, uh, who, whose owners also own RCN, he testified that Postobon funded his death squad. He also tes testified that other Colombian and international corporations funded them too, including Coca-Cola, which we all know, uh, 
uh, Bavaria, a, a Colombian beer manufacturer, and Ecopetro, which is Colombia's domestic petroleum corporation. So the family that owns RCN also funded paramilitary death squads. Um, RCN also owns a channel called NTN24, which is run by a woman named Claudia Gurisati. Gurisati was the director of RCN years ago, and she was extremely close to another death squad leader named Carlos Castaño, who, acting in league with the Colombian government, ordered the murder of the most beloved journalist in Colombian history, Jaime Garzón. So today, Gurisati directs NTN24, which ran an article and this video. Palazzo, assassino, assassino. La imagen del momento nos llega desde Washington DC. Lo que acaban de ver es el momento, parte del momento en el que el activista Dan Cohen confronta e insulta al expresidente de Colombia, Iván Duque, mientras transitaba por las calles de la capital de Estados Unidos junto a sus hijas menores. Then we have Caracol Radio. Caracol means snail, uh, which, and, and this outlet ran this piece, highlighting the figures criticizing me, but like all of the others, once again, couldn't refute anything I said. Caracol Radio is owned by a Spanish conglomerate called Grupo Prisa, which owns a massive amount of media outlets in Latin America and Spain, including El País and Cadena Ser, Spain's top radio station. And Caracol Radio owns W Radio Colombia. The director of that channel, W Radio Colombia, Julio Sanchez Cristo, accused me of a cowardly attack against Duque. But Julio Sanchez Cristo was according to the reporting of Colombian journalist Gonzalo Guillén, was mentioned in U.S. judicial files and records as a recipient of money from the Ochoa Vasquez family, which controls the Medellin drug cartel. So W Radio also published a piece saying, my confrontation was rejected in Colombia, completely rejected. The comments prove otherwise. But what's especially hilarious about this one is somebody posted a poll underneath asking if people su support me, the journalist, or Duque. And the result was more than 10,000 votes with more than 81% in my favor. Uh, so <laughs> not exact, so they got it, they got it wrong. Uh, I mean, there are, just, there are just too many of these to go over in a single segment. The mayor of Bogota, who's extremely liberal, denounced me. The former president uh, of, of Colombia, Ivan Duque's boss, Alvaro Uribe, he tweeted about it. But I mean, the main thing to understand here, Clayton, is that the professional media class is the propaganda wing of the Colombian narco state. It's just one huge animal. And what I've shown here today is just the tip of the iceberg. It's unbelievable that you have the people of Colombia answering these polls and showing their support for what you uncovered and what you talked about. But the media class, the political class, of course, all in bed together, publish all of these hit pieces on you. Was there anybody um, maybe in the media or the political class that actually came to your defense? Someone who's brave? Anybody like that? In the political media class? I mean, I, I'll, I'll put it this way. I've received literally thousands of messages from average Colombians, the vast majority of them are messages of love and support. Um, the Colombian artists El Matador and Alexro, who's in exile, uh, they've done fantastic political cartoons about the confrontation with Duque. So it's been an overwhelmingly positive response. I mean, there are literally millions of Colombians who want to confront Duque at, like I did and would do a much better and more thorough job but they can't because at the very least they'd be destroyed professionally or they might even be killed. So it's been an overwhelmingly positive response. Um, Can I just ask a question? I'm just curious, do the Colombian sure. people, because I don't know, I'm just asking, but did the Colombian people, are the Colombian people aware at how corrupt their media is? Or, like are the Colombian people aware where they get their money? So when they read these these hit pieces, do they laugh at them? Do they do, do they know where this money comes from or are they totally in the dark about it? Yeah, I mean, in general, people know. Uh, it's no secret to them. These outlets are totally have been totally discredited. It's only the kind of hardcore supporters of Duque and Oribe um, 
who who benefit from that or for some reason believe in their political project of the narco state that really support uh, 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 that kind of thing. But overall, yeah, people understand that these outlets, um, if they weren't propaganda, the propaganda wing of the narco state to begin with, they have been co-opted and, and turned into it. But I mean, I've received so so those people have given me a lot of a lot of love. I mean, it's it's incredible. I read all of the messages and obviously I can't respond to hardly any of them. I'd be sitting here all day uh, writing to people. But I've also received many hate messages, comparatively few um, in, in, you know, in comparison to the amount of, of support I've gotten. But I've gotten hate messages and threats from Duque's supporters, which which is totally predictable. Um, but again, totally pales in comparison to the positive feedback. I also want to point out to the independent media outlets, I, I want to give them a shout out and the journalists that have done positive coverage and they risk their lives on a daily basis to expose the information that I presented about the Colombian narco state. I mean, none of the information that I've presented today is original. So a huge shout out to journalists like Gonzalo Guillén, Julian Martinez, Urias Velázquez, William Parra. Uh, there are many Colombian journalists and regular people who I'm indebted to for their work and support so I can expose these things unredacted to an English language audience. So we're going to keep exposing the crimes of the Colombian narco state and the United States role where where these decisions are made here in Washington that keeps Colombia uh, as a permanent bloodbath. So everyone keep watching. Uh, keep an eye here on Redacted. Cuenta conmigo, Colombia. Yeah, that just speaks to how important it is to support independent media. So thanks to the brave folks in Colombia who are doing this amazing reporting as well. And thanks to Dan for sharing this story and educating all of us about this. Thanks so much, Dan. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.